Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we would like to look at the prayer of Asa. 2 Chronicles 14 verse 11 through 15. We see Asa, he is the grandson of King Solomon. He was the third king of Judah after it was divided. And he was the first good king, the scripture tells us. He had 10 years of peace during his 41 years reign. But today's lesson will show to us uh, that Asa relied on God and, and God alone. He had faith in Jehovah. His faith was tested, but God also rewarded his faith. And because he was a man of faith and a man who trusted and relied on God, even in the time of peace, then when the time of war came, all he needed to do was to humbly Cry to God for help. So we see the source of Asa's peaceful reign was about his heart's attitude, his heart's condition towards Jehovah. When he began to reign, he put away the sins of of his father Abijah. He urged his people to seek the Lord. He himself led the way by purging his kingdom of idolatry. So during this time of rest, he began to fortify his cities. He gathered large army of 580,000 men. Judah's peace was threatened by an Egyptian army of 1 million men with 300 chariots who came up against them in 2 Chronicles 14 and we will see that in verse 8 through 10. Verse 11, which is our concentration verse today, tells us that Asa called upon God, the one in whom he trusted. And he did this as a lifestyle. So when trouble come, when war was against him, he cried to God for help. He exercised his feet and he trusted in God. So as we look at the story in 2 Chronicles 14, as we read from verse 11 through verse 15, it says, Asa called out to the Lord his God. And said, Lord, only you can help weak people against those who are strong. Help us, Lord or God. We depend on you. We fight against this large army in your name. Lord, you are our God. Don't let anyone defeat you. Then the Lord used Asa's army from Judah to defeat the Ethiopian army, and the army ran away. Asa's army chased the Ethiopian army all the way to the town of Gear. So many Ethiopians were killed that they could not get together as an army to fight again. They were crushed by the Lord and his army. Asa and his army 
carried many valuable things away from the enemy. Asa and his army defeated all the towns near Gear. The people living in those towns were afraid of the Lord. Those towns had very many valuable things. Asa's army took those valuable things away from those towns. His army also attacked the camps where the shepherds lived and took many sheep and camels. Then they went back to Jerusalem. When we look at verse 11 of 2 Chronicles 14, we see that the king Asa prayed 50 words. This prayer was short and to the point. The enemy was upon them. There was no time for a long prayer. There was no time for eloquent in speech. It was time for battle. He was desperate. An army twice time the size of his was coming against him. Remember, he had 580,000 men in his army. The Ethiopians were a million strong with 300 chariots. We see the king. He was in a desperate situation which needed desperate prayer. And as he desperately prayed, his prayer was effective. Yes, we will be in desperation, but we have to be in a relationship with God. Abiding in him and his words abiding in us for us to be able to call upon God with effect prayer and result of victory at the end of day. He had a personal relationship with God. And so because of that, desperate means, means as in his case, called for the desperate prayer and he was able to do it. Why? When there was peace for these 10 years, he followed the Lord in peace. He knew the Lord would care for him in war. So Asa know that prayer is essential. So when the incidents occur, he was already prayed up. He was not waiting for the incident to show up, then to pray. But he knew how essential prayer was, so he was a man who trusted in God and prayed. In his prayer, it showed that he relied upon God, not upon himself, nor upon his army. His faith was tested, he trusted Jehovah, the Almighty God. And we see where God rewarded his faith because his reliance was upon God. He said it is God who would do the fighting for them because there is nothing that is too hard for God. Remember as we say Asa's army was one half of that of the Egyptians. It is the Lord who smote the Egyptians and they fled. They were so defeated, they could not recover themselves to fight another battle. They were destroyed. Asa and his men without God can do nothing. And so the attack, the Bible says, it was God's army who did it. Because the attack was on God because it was on God's people. 
Therefore, God did not allow them to prevail. And we can safely say today, no man can fight God and win. God is the winner every time. Let us trust him to fight on our behalf. It was not about the manpower. It was all about God's power. Because the king trusted in God. We see he humbly did that. He declared we have no might. So it's not on us, God. It's on you. And he tells us it is not by might, nor is it by power. They did not have the power. They were outnumbered. But God heard and answered Asa's prayer. He will hear and answer us, his people, when we pray. But we must be in that relationship where we are abiding in him and his word is abiding in us. We can like Asa pray 50 words or less. He says, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help. Do you have a problem today? Trust in God like King Asa did and surely he will hear, he will answer prayer, and he will give us the victory. God bless you. Thank you again for watching, and may God bless the USA.